Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured. But the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. In book one of his work on duties, Cicero brings up a very interesting doctrine from Stoic ethics that presumably he is getting from Panaetius, um, and that is what we have come to call the doctrine of the four characters. Um, this, this shows up primarily just as in a primary sense uh, in, in Cicero, and of course he's taking this from other authors and, and summarizing it for us. Uh, it would be nice if he'd gone into greater detail about this here, but it, it's really quite an interesting passage in book one of On Duties. And, and this has a wide application. There may be other ways in which this could be parsed out, but this is a way of distinguishing the things that are really up to us or that are coming from us and the things that are coming to us in certain ways from external sources or at least from they've been implanted within us by something other than ourselves. Now I want to mention here that what we're translating as character is in Latin persona. Originally, um, character, also in Greek, uh, prosopon, persona, they mean the same thing. It's a mask that the actors would wear when you see like the tragic and comedic masks uh, in the theater. And the idea is that each mask represented a certain kind of person, right? And so we can talk about a person's character in the sense of being, say, for example, the miser, or being the angry person, or being the generous person. But we can also talk about character in many other ways, and this is really going to stretch it. Now, Cicero starts by talking about two distinct types of character that we human beings, each of us, gets, as he says, from nature. That is, uh, the, the, the way the world works assigns these to us. The first of these has to do with a common character uh, that all of us share. You could call it universal or general. Uh, communis is, is the actual Latin that he's using there. And, and what does this consist in? It's our rationality. This is what distinguishes us from all of the other animals, according to uh, the Stoics and really most of the other ancient philosophers. And that, that you know, is a doctrine that I think still many people today uh, find, find quite compelling. Um, so this is something that all of us have in common. It doesn't mean that we all express it to the same degree or in the same ways, but he says that it arises from the fact of our being endowed with reason and with that superiority which lifts us above the other animals. And then he says, this is what all morality and propriety are derived from. And from this depends the rational method of ascertaining our duty. So this is a, a kind of common human inheritance that we all possess, and you know we were somewhat subject to waiting to, to maturity before we can use it entirely. But it is something that we all can, you can say, count on to some degree. Now it gets much more interesting when we look at the second thing that comes to us from nature, and and, and actually Cicero spends quite a few pages talking about examples of this, giving us adages about what we need to do. And we'll come back to them in a moment. This is, this is what he says is assigned to individuals. He uses the word singulis here, right? He doesn't just say particulars. He means individuals, individual human beings as human beings. This is a really interesting doctrine. Each one of us is given certain talents or 
temperaments or propensities. Um, and we're not, we're also not given others. So each of us has not only this general human character, but each of us also has this individual human character. And Cicero expresses the idea that it's important for us to get to know it and to not try to buck it. He even goes so far as to say that there are some things that are appropriate for one person, but would not be appropriate for another person because of that individual character that they have. Now, that doesn't mean that there's, there's things that violate, you know, universal rules. But when we get down to the realm of application and what we might even call style, you know, when we get down to the concrete, there's a lot of things that are appropriate to some of us, but don't make sense for others. And it, it could be good to look at a few of his examples. Um, he talks about some of the things that people are are given to, he says. Uh, some people are given physical endowments like speed for the race, strength for wrestling. Some are, you know, good looking. So others don't get that. Some are stately. Uh, there's, there's diversities of character. Some have uh, very witty, others not so. Some have um, uh, great intellectual gifts. Um, some can be very serious. Um, and they live an austere life. You know, Socrates is an example. Fascinating and witty, witty uh, genial conversationalist. He was what the Greeks call iron in every conversation, pretending to need information. So uh, Socrates' irony, for example, is viewed as being something that, that pertained to his character, that made sense for him. Not that everybody else should try to imitate that and do the Socratic method in the Socratic way. This is a very interesting idea that Cicero is, is working with here. The third character, he says, is that which ends up being imposed or assigned to us by factors that are outside of our control. He talks about chance, uh, casus, how things happen to, to go. He talks about the times, tempus, um, you know, sometimes we talk about a person having greatness imposed on them by being in the right place at the right time. Um, or you might say even being in the wrong place at the right time, right? Or being in, in, in the, the right place at the wrong time. We could go on and on with this. But the idea is that um, there are all sorts of things that the, the conditions that we find ourselves in may offer us. Uh, impose upon us, take away from us. And that becomes part of who we are as well. So, you know, the fact that, that we're living now in a time that affords the very possibility of doing this, my standing in front of a, a chalkboard with a uh, flip cam and lighting that I bought from Amazon and uh, recording this and shooting it out to you through the interwebs or, you know, 50 years from now, whatever this happens to turn into, you know, maybe holograms of some sort. Well, that has to do with our time. If this were 40 years ago, that would not really be a possibility for me. And there wouldn't be any Gregory Sadler PhD channel uh, giving you uh, over a thousand videos on philosophy at this point and hopefully many more to come, right? So there, there's all sorts of things along these lines. Cicero himself, great example. He was stuck in a time watching the decline and uh, breakup of his, you know, Roman Republic. Uh, he found himself having to take sides in a civil war. These are all the sort of things that can be imposed upon us. And they become part of our character. The fourth is the most interesting of all, I think. Because this is where our own personal responsibility enters in here. You know, you don't get to choose being a human being. And you really don't get to choose this kind of character, your temperament or talents or whatever it is that you are endowed with. And you don't choose the times that you live in. But you do, you do choose what you do with it. You do choose what you do with your actions, your words, your thoughts, the way of life that you select. You may have a propensity towards a certain type of life, but you can go against that or realize it. 
And so he talks about this character, this fourth type of character that is actually assumed by our free choice. Uh, Eudicio nostro, right? Eudicium is the ability to choose between alternatives. Uh, he even uses the word will. Uh, a nostra voluntate. From our own choice, from our own will, from our own decision, commitment, where it is that we decide to place ourselves, what it is that we decide to make of ourselves. So whereas these others can be from nature or from fortune uh, in, the, in the classic sense, uh, fortunata, right? This is really from ourselves. This is where we make ourselves into what we're going to be. So, you know, to use a, 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 a Stoic example, Cato, you know, who Cicero looks at as like, that is the Stoic guy par excellence. Um, he had common human rationality. He probably had some pretty strong temperaments steering him certain ways. He rose to the occasion provided. But it was through his free choice that he maintained an exemplary Stoic life and uh, fought Caesar under Pompey, lost along with Pompey, and committed suicide. There's some things even that, you know, Cicero uses this as an example. Committing suicide could be okay for a Cato, but not good for somebody else. Now, I do want to come back to this notion of the second uh, type of, of, of character that comes to us from nature, uh, in, in part because Cicero tells us a few important things uh, about it. He says that there's dissimilarities and similarities that exist in nature and characters, and he tells us that these are not to be criticized or condemned. They, you know, minime tamen vituperandorum, right? These are not to be made into vices unless they happen to go against this common human nature. He tells us further, everyone should resolutely hold fast to his own peculiar gifts. As long as they're peculiar only, as long as they're, you know, propria, uh, proper to that person and not vicious in order that propriety can be secured. We shouldn't oppose the universal laws of human nature, but we should, he says, follow the bent of our own particular nature. We really, he, he almost goes so far as to say we have a duty to get to know ourselves and who we are and what kind of people we're going to be. Now, all of these ideally harmonize with each other. I think in the case of many people, we find these things at odds with each other. And that can be another very interesting uh, subject of inquiry, one that, that Cicero doesn't really go into here, but, but is certainly worth thinking about.